I'm Aaron with Galford Braking Systems and today we're going to do a little install on uh, some brake rotors. So what we wanted to start with is a bare wheel, no rotors you've taken, you've obviously taken it off the bike, um, taken your stock rotors off. And so we're going to show you how to install the new Galfer rotors. What you want to do is you want to clean up uh, the contact area where the new rotor is going to go as well as you're going to want to clean the, the OEM bolts because you will be reusing those. So you want to take the, the Loctite that comes stock on those off. Normal wire brush will work for that. Um, as you can see, we already do have one rotor on, um, on the back side here to show you how we're going to do the offset with the other side. We want to make sure that the rotors are offset from side to side and what that does is because you're going from a round rotor to a wave rotor, there's going to be different characteristics between the two and we want to make sure that the wave pattern is offset so that you don't have any type of vibration once you put the rotors on. So we're going to lay it down. You've got your rotor. Now the rotors that we're using today are, uh, are super bike rotors, so they are directional. Um, if you have the standard set, it's not going to matter which side you put on first, left or right, there, because there's no direction. But with this one, we already have the right side rotor on, so right now we're going to put the left side on. The Superbike rotors do have a directional arrow on them, so you'll be able to tell, and that, that arrow is going to be going in the direction that the wheel will be spinning. And so you want to line up your holes. Now when I say offset, you want to make sure that the outside wave pattern um, from the right side rotor to the left side rotor, if you can make it so that the peak of the rotor on both sides is offset. So say this is your, your left side, on the right side you want the peak of the other side rotor to be in the middle of this trough. So, and if that's possible, awesome. If not, you want to make sure that the, the carrier section, that from the left side to the right side, that if the carrier lines up in the, in the center here, so that you're offset one way or another. Install the new rotor. Now when you're tightening them down, you do want to use a you know, similar pattern to when you're you know, removing or, or putting your wheel back on your car and, and use a, you know, the star type pattern. So. We're just going to torque them down a little bit to begin with, and then we'll, we'll use the, the OEM spec from then on. And so we've got the, the second rotor installed, and you can see that um, the wave pattern itself is, is slightly off, but the center section, the carrier, is, uh, is offset from one side to the other side. And that, uh, again, is to minimize the amount of vibration that you're going to feel from the actual pattern itself on the brake pads. Another step when doing the install, you want to make sure that they're offset. You do want to have the wheel rebalance. Most of the times, you know, guys will change their tires at the same time when they're doing this install. So it's a, always a perfect time to have the wheel rebalanced. Okay, so now we have our rotor torqued down to the OEM specifications. Um, we're, we're going to go throw it on the bike. Uh, we do recommend that uh, you put a new, new set of brake pads in uh, whenever you're replacing your rotors. We do recommend Galfer brake pads with the Galfer rotor. Um, you're going to want to take it easy. We recommend for 100 miles, just easy, you know, in-city kind of traffic driving. Um, no just, you know, getting on the freeway, jumping, you know, going 80 miles an hour and getting on the brakes. We're slowly break in the, the brake pads and the, the rotor. It's going to need to go through a few heat cycles in order for it to, to get to its full operating uh, temperatures. So just take it easy for the first 100 miles. You want to true the calipers and the wheel so that everything lines up straight. So what we've done is with the wheel back on, axle's still a little bit loose, pinch bolts are a little bit loose, and the caliper bolts are all a little bit loose. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pump your lever a few times, build up pressure so that your brake pads are grabbing on your rotor. And with pressure held onto it, you're going to want to tighten up your caliper bolts. in mind this is maintaining pressure so that the brake pads stay in place. Tighten them up on both sides. This may help if you have a buddy around to hold the lever while you go back and forth across the bike. caliper bolts, you want to move to the pinch bolts.
Just make sure that those are all tight. Again, both sides. And then you can lastly go to your axle bolt.